Hey everyone, hope you are all doing very well. We are back with another video talking about our 100 mile per hour Arma Limitless, utilizing a beast of a motor, otherwise known as the 1721 2400 kV Castle Creations motor. So one of the big things about speedrun cars that you will see and hear a lot about is a capacitor bank or cap pack. We're going to go specifically into why in our setup are we not actually using one. And we're going to verify that that decision is okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through exactly what a capacitor bank or cap pack looks like. We're gonna talk about how you actually get it into your radio controlled car, what the installation would look like. Then we're gonna understand why we actually want these in our radio controlled vehicle. And it doesn't have to just be a speed run car. It can be in any type of radio controlled vehicle. And then lastly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna verify that our decision to not run with a cap pack is actually in fact okay. Okay, and we'll be able to do that through the data collection that we did through the video where you saw it in our last one. Just before we move on here, I want to say thank you to all the patrons who help make these types of projects possible. I really am looking forward to collecting all the data and beefing up the spreadsheet that you all have access to download. We're going to make that spreadsheet even more powerful with the data that we collect so that we can more easily predict the speeds based off of a certain setup. So look forward to seeing how that evolves over time. So let's take a look at what these things actually look like. Here is a cap bank or cap pack, whatever you want to call it. If you use either name, I'm sure most would understand what you're actually referring to. This one is made by Castle Creations. It has four capacitors on one circuit board with posts for you to mount it and locate it within your system. Now, ideally, you would have your speed control, let's say if it was right here, and these posts would end up getting mounted or solder to your leads of your speed control. It is best if those speed control leads are obviously close. In our case with the big Castle Creations XLX2, they're not. So it would probably have to be mounted right here and it would look kind of funny sitting there and probably interfere with the body. So what most people do is they actually relocate this to a more convenient location. Now the reason why I say and I'm showing that this would typically be mounted as close as possible is if you mount it further away, it loses its effectiveness. If you ended up mounting it somewhere over here and ran wires all the way back to the speed control, you would be reducing its overall effectiveness and that would not be ideal. You can get these capacitor banks in varying forms where they may not look exactly like this with capacitors mounted onto this PCB board and then you have a couple posts. You may have it all shrunk wrap and a couple wires coming out of the shrunk wrap section. They all work the same essentially, so it doesn't matter what form factor you have as long as you can physically mount it into your application. Now let's talk about why are many recommending to put a capacitor bank into your radio controlled vehicle, especially those high speed run type car. In this case, we are drawing a lot of power under acceleration with our radio controlled vehicle. And when we are at partial throttle, the electronic speed control has to operate in such a way where it's turning on and off the actual transistors in the speed control in order to give us partial throttle output that gets sent to the motor. It is in this time where you actually build what is known as ripple voltage. And if that ripple voltage gets too high, it can actually destroy the capacitors that's built within your electronic speed control on the power side where it connects to your battery pack and if those go, then the transistors are going to go in your speed control and then you'd have nothing left other than a paperweight. A capacitor bank is not going to help you gain speed, gain acceleration performance, nor is it going to help if you have a lower capacity pack trying to deliver a high amount of power. It's not gonna have anything to do with that. It's specifically to help out with ripple voltage for your electronic speed control to increase the reliability and allow it to run for more than just a few runs. 
Now the question is, why did I not run it within this specific setup? Well, the easy answer for me is I don't like to go and take a capacitor bank and just mount it in there just because. What I like to do is figure out if I actually need it or not, and if I determine I don't need it, then I don't need to put it in there. It doesn't clutter up my, my setup, and it looks, in my opinion, much better without having a capacitor bank mounted somewhere within the radio control vehicle. Now it is good to also note that some electronic speed controls actually come with a capacitor bank mounted. And I'm talking about some of these electronic speed controls that are put into ready-to-fly airplanes, ready-to-run radio control boats, and those sorts of applications where the user has no idea that it actually exists unless you start to take things apart and notice that your ESC has this extra bank there. We won't talk exactly about ripple voltage and what that is. If you want to learn more about that, I have several videos on the channel that go into deep detail so that we're able to understand what is actually happening and we can actually prevent that ripple voltage from destroying our electronic speed control. However, the point that I'm bringing this example to you for is because some manufacturers, especially for radio controlled EDF jets, they want to use a cap pack because they're extending the leads, and that would be the leads from the electronic speed control going to the battery pack. They extend this longer so they can actually reach a further part within that radio controlled vehicle. And in that case, this could increase the ripple voltage that that electronic speed control would have. And to reduce it back to normal, you add in your capacitor pack or capacitor bank and your electronic speed control is now going to be safe again. So just another layer to add there in why these things are actually being used. Now let's take a look at the ripple voltage as measured in the data log for this radio control vehicle when we exceeded the 100 mile per hour mark on our setup. We wanna verify that the ripple voltage is okay and that we do not need to actually install this cat pack as of yet. So let's take a look at that and we'll see if we are okay. Here is the runs that we made on 6S as well as the runs that we made here on 8S. It's divided by this line, represents session one on 6S, session two on 8S. This is the very first passes that we made in our 8S run right here at the very end. This is where we hit 100 miles per hour on day number one, roughly uh, 18 minutes or so into our day and running this car for the very first time. What we're interested in is looking at ripple voltage and the power out. However, we're gonna start by looking at our less offending session and that's session one on 6S. Much less current is going to be drawn here on this run and we can take a look at a couple different peaks. So if we look at the first one, we can see we got some significant ripple voltage that comes up and then even on our second one, we can see the ripple voltage bouncing around and our third pass here where we hit the highest speed, we can see that we have quite a bit of ripple voltage um, coming up there as well. Now, the biggest thing on how we determine what is okay for us is based off of a percentage. And that percentage is based off of a nominal voltage. Since we know that we're running a 6S pack, we can take 6S, multiply by 3.7, and that's the 22.2 volts that we're all familiar with on a 6S LiPo battery pack. Now we want to multiply that by 10%, which gives us 2.22 volts. This is the voltage that we have to be below for ripple voltage. If we are above this, we need to add a capacitor bank or find some way to reduce ripple voltage within this setup. If we ignore it, we could lose the speed control on any future run because this is an excessive value at that point. So we do not want to be above 10%. This is a big warning. Typically, what I like to have in terms of my setups is being able to be around the 5% mark or lower. That's generally what I look for for a typical setup within these high performance vehicles. So now we just compare the value of maximum here, which is 0.81 volts against our 2.2, and we are way, way below that. So ripple voltage is not a concern for us on our first session being on 6S, pulling lesser amps than our 8S run. So this is the conservative session that we are looking at right now. And if we divide our 2.2 by two, we're gonna get 1.11 volts. This is generally where I like to be around or less than, this is representing 5% 
of our 6s nominal voltage. We want to stay below 1.11 volts to be less than 5% and this is generally a good rule to follow. 1.11 is greater than the 0.81 volts so we are okay. Let's move on to session number two. We'll choose session two and go okay. So the first thing that we notice here is our ripple voltage now jumped up 0.81. We're now at 1.57 so it's almost double our ripple voltage for a bump by 2s in terms of our lithium polymer voltage. So we'll do the exact same calculation. We'll look at our nominal. We know 8s multiplied by 3.7 is the 29.6. We take 10% of that. We must make certain that we are below 2.96 volts. And we are, we're not even close to three volts or so. We're almost half of that. So it tells us that we are roughly around the 5% mark. So if we were to go and take our 29, 0.6 and multiply it by 0.05 representing 5%. We could have divided the 10% value by two and this would get us the same value as well. 1.48 volts, somewhere generally around 5% or less is where exactly I want to be. Our case here at ripple voltage, 1.57 volts, pretty close to that 5% mark. I don't see a major concern, but let's look into it further. Are we seeing these ripple voltage on every single pass? So we'll start off at our fastest pass, and our fastest pass is not necessarily where we see the highest ripple voltage. We zoom into that offending section here, and we can see where we hit 100% throttle. So generally in this range of 100% throttle, you're never going to see your ripple voltage maxing out here. And that is because the FETs in our speed control don't have to do any PWM, this type of modulation to modulate the speed for us under partial throttle. When we look at the maximum ripple voltage of this particular pass, it occurs at 53% of our output power of our electronic speed control. So that's probably around the 50 to 75% mark in terms of throttle input. And we're seeing ripple voltage at 1.3 being less than the 1.48 by quite a large margin. You can also see that relative to my throttle input, it was pretty, pretty linear, pretty smooth in terms of how I was able to modulate the power getting up to full speed. And this is, again, the pass that hit 100 miles per hour. So let's go take a look at the second area here. This is another area where we can see what kind of ripple voltage we got. So we see a big jump here from about 60% power all the way to around the 82% output power up to 100%. So we actually have ripple voltage hitting a maximum right around this area where there's a significant bump in uh, output power. And this actually gets us up to 1.41. However, the 1.41 volts is still below our 1.48. So we have two of the three passes where we are actually below the 5% mark. And that's where we would prefer to be uh, in order to make sure that we don't need to add any capacitor banks to our setup. So we'll jump out of this, we'll jump back into the next one here and just see what we're looking at for our very first 100% throttle pass. No, I didn't properly do it, let's try that again. We're gonna go and zoom into this section here and we see very similar you know, mark here where we have our ripple voltage just occurring at the 90% mark where it hits a max and that max of ripple voltage is the 1.57 that we have for the entire all sessions of our six and eight S run. So it only happened once and it happened for a very split second. You see the time that I, I actually hit that over 5% is somewhere around, if we look at the timestamp here, 156.9 versus 157.2. So we're actually over our mark there by a small fraction of a second. So let's zoom back out and just take a look at our ripple voltage here. One of the things that I did not do in terms of let you guys know is that the very first run that we did here on 8S, this used very old battery packs and we definitely have some opportunity to reduce our ripple voltage of 1.57 just by going to fresh brand new batteries that can dump a lot of power. That should help reduce this value before we actually go to the whole getting a cap pack, soldering that in and try to reduce ripple voltage that way. So that's good to know 
that we do have other opportunities to reduce our ripple voltage. And not only will that re reduce our ripple voltage, because it is an expensive upgrade, cat packs are definitely cheaper than a brand new battery, but it's gonna allow us to get more power, more speed, and all that other stuff that's associated with better quality, newer batteries. Well, there you have it. We don't need to place a cat pack into this vehicle, into this setup as it stands today. Now I will continue to monitor this to make sure that it is okay as we push this car faster and faster. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.